Hey everyone. Hey, hey, and welcome to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. We are excited that you are joining us tonight. Corey has some really fun, cool stuff to show you. Freehand skills. No pressure. No <laughs> pressure. Um, when I saw him planning it out, I'm like, that's really cool. I didn't think about like throwing some of those techniques in there. So he's going to like throw some techniques techniques in there tonight for you. Yes, yes, I'm going to throw <laughs> some techniques in there. Um, tonight we're going to be taking a look at the color play panel by Northcott once again. Yep. Um, we've looked at that before here on After Hours. So if you want to see some of those episodes or that episode, that <laughs> um, go back and check that out. But tonight we're going to be looking at the heart block that is kind of arrayed in a circle, basically. Mm -hmm. And I want to show you a couple of different things with some trapunto work and some ruler work and some templates. Oh, fun. Yeah. So you threw a few techniques I in threw there. in quite a few. This is going to be a good one. So definitely sit back, grab a snack, and I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. All right, let's jump over All there. right, so let's head over. So over here on the machine, a few little tidbits before we get started. Um, this is that color play panel like we just talked about. And I want to do a little bit of trapunto work to make it pop a little bit more. So I cut a piece of wool batting. If you don't have wool, you could use polyester as well. Um, and I cut it the exact same kind of circle distance that would go around this section. And I've already placed it. I'll pull this back a little bit so you can see it. I've already placed it underneath this section so that's basically laying just like that underneath and that's just going to give it a little extra poof for that one section so if you want to do any of that extra poof make sure you put something underneath it prior to basting around or stitching around or anything like that you so. could do that like with any applique or anything really definitely that's yeah cool. that's, that's the best thing about it so i'm going to take our eight inch bullseye and I'm going to put this over this section. The cool thing about this um, bullseye is it has the line work of a basic eight. And that's how these hearts are laid out. So if you check the line work on the template, you can match that line work with the points of the heart to make sure you're in the direct center of it. So you get a good circle around the outside section because we want to tack down that uh, wool that's in there so when we're quilting it it's not shifting around. So I'm going to start with my machine. I've got a ruler base on and I'm doing 14 stitches per inch this evening. A little bit of a tighter stitch length which is good when you're doing custom work. And when people use ruler bases they, they need to make sure they're using their ruler foot or at least a quarter inch foot, right? Correct, yeah. So I'm going to get that on there. I'm going to hold that nice and tight. Um, don't push too hard on the machine because you won't be able to move it, but you do want to have a good grip. The uh, gripper dots for your ruler are a life saver when yeah, you're doing something awesome. like this. So I'm going to start up the machine and just slowly move this around whenever you're doing ruler work or template work. You don't have to go super crazy fast. Take your time with it. And you kind of want to pull the machine against the template a little bit. That way it has control. And I'm going around this section. I know it's really kind of hard for y'all to see. Once you get to a point where you can't go any further, stop the machine and move your hand around the other side. Don't try to strain your hand at all. Then you just keep working around. Again, remember, take it slow. It's not a race as we go around this. Holding pressure with the machine against that template so you can get the look that you want. If your hand's feeling awkward, stop the machine, move your hand. Another uh, good tip on this, if you're doing ruler work, to stop with your needle down. And what I mean by that, so if I stop real quick, it's going to stop in the down position. If you have that feature on your machine, it's really nice to have. We're going to keep working around until we get back to our starting point. And I've got camera in my way, so I was a little off, but that's okay. Gets the idea. So we're going to work around that. Pull up our threads, tie off, and cut. Just like that. So it's got that wool tacked down in the center. I'll move my template out of the way. And now I'm going to work on these um, hearts first on the outside section. I have a little bit of a smaller template to help me get from heart to heart, so I have a nice arch. Um, but you don't have to have that. You can kind of eyeball that if you'd like to. So I'm going to grab my machine and come down to one of the points. We're going to start with the top red heart here. Do a tie off to tie our threads down. 
And what I want to do is come in with some curls on this heart, and you'll see what I'm gonna do here in just a second. I'm starting coming around the right side to the inner portion. And this is just an eyeball, totally eyeballing it. I'm gonna do a little bit of a curl, come out and stay within the heart. Go into it, and now come to the outside of it. Back to our point. Now, if you wanna eyeball it, you can, or if you wanna take a template, put it against your foot, and kind of get your nice arch over. You can do that as well. Completely up to you. Now we're gonna travel up this one, same way, around the outside first, curl, and then stay on the inside. Stay on the inside on the left here, curl, and then come around the outside. Grab your template if you want to. Arch over. Remove your template and go. So could you draw the arches with like a chalk pencil ahead of time and then just do it that way instead of having the template? You could, Use yeah. Use the template, draw the arches. You could. Having the template just gives you a little bit more control yeah. for your arch, but yeah. you definitely could, yeah. So this one I'm just going to kind of freehand over. And then I will do the outside again. Again, this is totally eyeballing it. On this one, that extra batting that we have under there for that trapunto work is going to give it an extra poof for me. Again, I just freehand it over. Curl, stay on the inside. Curl, and then travel on the outside. Okay, I'm going to come back in with my template. Again, on the outside here. And on the inside. You kind of on the inside if you wanted to on the inside of stuff, can't you use the popping foot, like the quarter inch part of it to stay, like to keep an even distance in between? You could, yeah, totally. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So many different options. Yeah. So if you were wanting to have a little more consistency, you could probably just use the line that's on the fabric and then do the ruler up the foot up against that line and do kind of like an echo in a way. For the inside of the heart? The inside saying? or the outside. Any, yeah. any kind of line work that you would be doing, whether it's a heart, a circle, star. Totally, yeah. If you're looking for a guide is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Travel that way. And then last but not least, we're going to come in and close that up just like that. I can see the poof. Yeah, got a little bit of poof going on now. Uh, love the feel that's happening with this. Um, since we're already here, if you want to go in and add little extra pieces into this section to close that up, you can. So I'll trim these threads real quick. And then I'll just come in with a little bit of a swirl. Or I guess not a swirl, a loop. <laughs> <laughs> just going in and out of your points here. Just like that. And just like that. Oh, yeah. So that that's section good. there. So for this background right here to give it an extra uh, lockdown to make the center heart the kind of main focus, since you are still already quilting, you can do a little bit of a micro stipple into that. And then we're going to trace around this heart. And then all this background section will be micro quilting. So it's going to make that heart really poof. We're not doing the curl into the heart like these outside ones. We're keeping that kind of by itself to make it show up more. Okay. We're trying to keep this continuous as much as we can. So we're going to do a little bit of a micro stipple in here to the center, and then we're going to work around this heart. Again, if you wanted to use your hopping foot as a guide to have a little bit of a channel, you could definitely do that. I'm just eyeballing this one. Now that that's done, you're going to come out and you can micro quilt all the way around. Do a little bit of that micro stipple. There's only three rules with stippling. Uh, no points, no crossing over, and try not to get in a pattern. Other than that, all you. And you can make your stippling as tight or as open as you would like. That's what's nice about freehand is that it doesn't, you can do whatever you want to do. Totally. There's no rules. Just like that.
And then if you wanted to come in around this outside section, maybe add a little feather wreath, you could. I would trim my threads and then move to this section. So we'll pick up our thread. This is a little extra bonus. I didn't plan on doing a <laughs> feather on the outside, but why not since we're here? Oh, I think that'll add to it. We'll good. come up here to this section, pull up our threads, tie off, and then we can start the stitching process. And you can, you already have a guide on the outside to follow. You can make those feathers a little bit deeper when you get into the points of the heart here. Give the feather work a little bit of dimension. When you get into the loop, you can make it a little deeper. Shorten it back up, a little deeper. You're traveling back out to that circle, that bullseye template that we used. This is a good panel to practice all these different techniques. Mm-hmm, no question. And we, we saw a customer earlier, they showed us how they took this panel and then cut these all out and put them into blocks. Mm-hmm. Added some really pretty fabric around it and it ended up being a beautiful quilt. I hear what you're saying, I'm focusing, sorry. But you're just working around this again, making some of those feathers a little bit more elongated to give it some dimension and to fill up gap. Oh, that looks really good. Just like that. So yeah. pick up your thread one last time. And that's what you have. There you go. You did that in just a few moments. Yeah. Doesn't take much time at all. But it's it's really fun to keep, I mean, we did this whole part out here and the inside section more or less continuous. We kept, we did these hearts first, then we moved over and then we did the swirl or the loops and then moved in, did micro quilting along with the uh, quilting around the heart. Got a little extra poof with that wool having underneath it. Mm -hmm. You could have made this uh, micro stippling uh, much more tight and it really would have poofed up your center more. Um, it just takes a little bit more time and a little bit more thread um, to do it, but you definitely have that look right there as well. Love so it. pull up our thread and it wasn't in the books to do it, but can I do another block? Yeah, let's Can I do, do it. another one? Okay, yeah. let me roll up my quilt real quick. So even though I didn't tell you, I was prepared with other <laughs> things that we were going to do this evening. Um, it's always so, fun to throw something extra in there. Why not? Why not? <laughs> we always like a little extra. So on um, this block right here with these orange peels, um, what I wanted to do was to use our curvy square book okay. that we've got. Um, so I opened up the curvy square book oh, yeah, just to get ideas. Look at the block a different way. Um, we're going to be doing this design off of page 20 right here. And I'm gonna use our basic eight in each one of those to define my space. So I'm gonna line up the basic eight, label side down. That's fun how you can just grab the book and have the, when you have a panel or a block that already has the shape in there. Right. You don't necessarily have to have the stencil. So we're gonna use our pounce powder just to give ourselves some markings. If you don't have pounce powder or a stencil, you can kind of get the same idea. You would just probably wanna mark it out with a ruler. I love the stencils and pounce powder. They make things they so much easier. They are a lifesaver when you're doing stuff like this. Yeah. You don't need a ton of chalk on this. Well, it just surprises me how much we do with the basic eight. Oh, no question. <laughs> it's like if you don't have any stencil, just get the basic eight because you can even use it in computerized quilting. Yes, all the time. I'm gonna blow away some of that chalk. And then what I'm going to do here is I wanna start my path to do this continuous. Keeping continuous is really where we're wanting to go with this. So where I want to go is I'm going to start right down here at the bottom. We're going to do our work and then we're going to travel up into this one and you'll, you'll kind of get the flow of where we're going, but it's trying to keep this continuous the whole entire time. So we're going to come right down here and I'm going to take a single stitch and pull up my thread. I'm going to do some tie offs here. And then I'm going to start my quilting. So staying within my little basic eight, this is a tight space, but I want, that's why I went with a design that wasn't super duper crazy. So to here, I wanna travel straight up. If you have a ruler, that can help you, but you can pretty much freehand this straight up into this one. 
That little curl there, or little loop. I keep calling it a curl. It's a loop. There, loop there. Loop. Loop. And then we're going to loop here. Loop here. Close that off. We're going to travel back down and now go into the right one. Loop. Oh, I went the wrong way with my loop. Here, we're going to travel up and to the right. And we're going to do our loop. Loop into the point. Loop. 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 Down to this one. Once you get to about midway of that, you're going to travel down. We're going to complete this whole one at one time. We've been kind of taking these in, in strides. That way we can keep it continuous. This one will be one that we get to do all at one time. Travel back up. Continue going. Travel back this way. And close that one off. Come back down. And now we're back where we started. Just like that. So we've worked around this section in here, keeping it stitching continuously. We're now going to hop in to the petals, uh, the orange peels, and we're going to do some ribbon candy, something really open uh, to fill up these sections quite fast. So I can tell you for me, I would have been so confused trying to do that without some type of like a pattern or like um writing it down. Mm -hmm. So I think it's okay to, to, you know, to take a picture of that and like number it, right? Like mm -hmm. you did this for me so I could try to practice it too. Mm -hmm. And so let's just show them really quick. It's okay to like, you did this for me for me to like to try to practice it because I could not follow it. So if you wanted to, oh, it's hard to see, I guess we're too close. Let's put it down here. No. Yeah, I got oh, everything too close. You, <laughs> you can number the direction of where you need to go um, to help you because for me I would have to be looking at that constantly like when I was practicing it I'm like I need to look at something and so you drew that for me right yeah so if you're watching this on a smartphone you can pause and screenshot this so you have that to follow but it's just finding the path of least resistance basically to keep you stitching continuously yeah so I think it's good to see that that you can do that take your time and do that it'll make things a little easier when you're doing it good idea to show that <laughs> all right so we're still that was stitching a good idea to make it for me thank you you're welcome <laughs> So we just came down into this bottom left one and now we're just doing some ribbon candy. Coming back and forth around this. Again, this is another one of those finding the path of least resistance. And working your way through. And the best thing about these panels is you have you, this is your chance to make a mistake or find a new way to do something. Yeah. You're just practicing. And it's easier said than done, even for myself. Sometimes I get frustrated with myself. <laughs> it's, you know, easier just to let it go and just have fun. Well, I mean, I get frustrated with myself too, which is why you're the one always freehanding, because I'm like, oh, I'm going to make it look really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, even on that, that center one, I put the loop in the wrong direction. <laughs> I mean, now, now it's a design choice, but now's that time to make that mistake. Yeah. You know, we're just playing. We're having fun. We're learning new techniques. Working around the full outside of this with your ribbon candy. And now, since we're to this point, we don't want to close this off because now we're not going to stitch continuously. So I want you to head up to that upper right. Now up to the left. Travel down the left. Down the right. And back down the left. Back to where you started. So besides us pausing and talking, 
um, about you know different things, that was one full continuous stitch. Didn't have to stop. No, that's true. Keeping it, it continuous. You did yeah. the whole thing at one time. We started with the inner portions of these, following that that line path, and then came down here and did our ribbon candy the whole way. That's true. Just like that. Um, good thing about the ribbon candy on this one, you worked against the piecing line, so it gave it a little bit of interest and it didn't fall into the ditch of the piecing. You went the opposite direction on that. Cool. Great Just tips. Like so fun stuff. Guess we can head back to studio. Let's do it. All right. All right. So that was super fun. Lots of great tips there that you gave them. I'm coming, I'm coming. Sorry, <laughs> had to get from the machine. Here I am. Lots okay. of great tips that you gave them on that. And I mean, you were using the, the, the word mistake. I don't think it was a mistake. I think I will just keep them all as design choices. Never think that you're making a mistake. You're practicing, practicing, practicing to get that perfect design choice. Oh, such a mother. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, you really are at the end of the day. A mistake isn't the right word. That's how I critique myself. Yeah. It was a mistake from the way I wanted to do it. <laughs> but it, I mean, still, it ended up looking beautiful. Yeah, exactly. And no one besides everyone on YouTube um, <laughs> will know that that mistake is there when they're looking at it, you know, with the exactly. naked eye. You know, exactly. Exactly. No one else is going to notice that besides us and everybody else in the world. Yeah. So I guess the point in that, at least for me, is like don't get frustrated when you're trying to do stuff and it doesn't go the right direction that you thought in your mind you were going to go. Um, just repractice it and then just make it into a design choice that you like. Yeah. And don't get super flustered with it. I mean, even just a second ago when I went with that did the wrong loop, I got so flustered. I was just like, okay, I'm done. I, da, 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 da. I was like, no, I have to keep going because she's not going to take over. <laughs> Um, you just have to, it's, it's that inner saboteur. You just have to get that out of your head that it's, it's okay. It's going to be fine. Yeah, it's going to look great. And we all do that and it's okay to do that. Easier said get, than done. Yeah. yeah and to get out of just it. Just get past it and keep going and it's going to turn out great no matter what it looks like. That's the fun stuff. Yes. Alrighty. Well, thank you all so much for joining us this evening on After Hours. Um, we will not be live next Thursday no. um, as it is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we will see y'all the following Thursday. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye.